Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Today is August 23rd, and I received the following email on August 22nd. Hi, Steve. I wanted to ask you to consider making a video sharing your thoughts on the Revelation 12 sign. We are now coming up on two years after. Many of us thought of the event as analogous to a road sign. If my memory is correct, you yourself taught that the sign was not the event, but it was a sign that something was ahead. However, a road sign that says curves ahead makes no sense if the curves don't happen for another 1,200 miles. I am not aware of any Bible teachers addressing what happened. Do you think we missed it? Do you think something did happen, but we just don't know what it was? Please consider this issue. I appreciate your biblical views and would appreciate hearing your perspective on this issue. Thanks, Mark A. So I thought I would take a break from Romans to address uh, this question, uh, especially since we're coming up on the two-year anniversary of the sign. Looking at the facts, and I've had time to think about this, the following is my conclusion, and as usual, I don't ask or expect many to agree with me. I don't ask that anyone agrees with me. I, I don't expect that many will, but this is my take on this, and so uh, I spent some time uh, compiling some notes here this morning uh, to try to sum up my position as to where we are in regards to the Revelation 12 sign two years after the alignment. So I'll, I'll begin by just saying that you know, I think it first needs to be said that every condition of the sign was met. Scotty Clark's 7,000 screenshots, one for each of the 6,000 previous years and one for each of the next 1,000 years found no matches. Mark Chiswell's algorithm set it apart as unique. And there were other studies as well, such as by John Bell, that proved that, that the sign was unprecedented. I've known seminary professors and, uh, and other pastors that recognized the sign to be genuine. The sign, folks, occurred. Despite the explanations of the critics. So don't let them fool you. The sign did occur. I am personally, I'm convinced that God allowed the expectation as well as the disappointment to occur for good reasons. I'm equally convinced that sincere Christ loving Christians everywhere have not been labeled false prophets by God for their involvement in their hopeful expectation of this one unique event that getting it wrong did not transfer one sincere child of God into the company of those who are damned. I'm absolutely convinced of that and that such an accusation reveals, if anything, what it reveals is that the accuser's ignorance concerning a redemption that comes to us from pure grace alone, in which a real and present danger of being condemned exists. I haven't forgotten about it, folks, and just, you know, moved on. Neither have a multitude of Christians that who were awakened by it. The only ones who have forgotten about it are those who never had the blessed hope to begin with. Yes, we made a mistake. We perceived it as an event, even though the text itself referred to it as a sign. I pointed out this uh, fact early on. How that I believe that we, we made the, the, the grave error of just failing to consider the very word sign 
in looking at that as an event when it was assigned. Therefore, to say that the sign did not appear because there was no event, folks, is pure foolishness. Okay? Yet, that's how the critics have gone down on record. They are now the proud owners of that. They haven't debunked anything. They have fulfilled what was written, where is the promise of his coming. They now own that. Revelation 12.5 is a context of rescue from the threat of the dragon. We, we, we spent a lot of time talking about that. Some catastrophic event is going to occur, an asteroid something, okay? And then Christ is going to take us, suddenly snatch us out of here because of that imminent danger. The word rapture, harpazo, is used in the, te in the New Testament for a sudden removal from danger and a rescue and we know that Christ was not rescued but ascended and was in no danger and that har harpazo is never used of Christ's ascension to heaven of course the critics will say doesn't matter that those are two two different words they just mean the same thing as if the Holy Spirit and I guess, and this is kind of what disturbs me a little bit, is that the text would be treated so lightly. God used two different words. He had a reason for doing so. Okay? Thus, Revelation 12, 5 is completely inappropriate to describe the ascension of Christ, but it is completely appropriate to describe the rapture of the church as a rescue from Satan's emerging efforts to destroy the church as we approach the end times. But, and this is where we get into my explanation of this, and I don't ask anyone to agree with me. A rescue from Satan's emerging efforts in continued efforts to destroy the church as we approach the last of the of the last days not physically folks not physically but spiritually i believe this is the key element that we have failed to factor into the equation not physically, but spiritually in the sense of corrupting, perverting the gospel of Christ, replacing its purity, okay, with a man-centered, works-based, works-oriented, a, a religious system based upon human merit. That's the times that we're living. Replacing its purity, monergism, with synergism. Now, that's my take on this. Therefore, given the fact that there is a direct connection between Satan's efforts to destroy, that is, devour the church spiritually, doctrinally, doctrinally, he's, Satan is masquerades as an angel of light, And so given the fact that there's a direct connection between those efforts on Satan's part to devour the church spiritually and the rapture, I'm going to suggest that the destruction that Revelation 12.5 is speaking of is not physical, okay, but spiritual, having more to do with the absence of sound biblical doctrine, which has become a hated word nowadays in these in these final last few days before Christ's return don't don't want to hear about doctrine don't care about doctrine and the gospel that the modern church modern christianity preaches is a man-centered gospel that has elevated man and depressed Christ and i have boldly with 
great effort and with great determination dedicated this ministry the past two years since the Revelation 12 sign redirected the ministry toward the proclamation of that one true gospel, the gospel of Christ, that or that the, it is about what Christ did, not what man does. And folks, the light is growing dim. In fact, the flame has almost gone out. Look at the numbers of views on anyone's video that's preaching the gospel of Christ. So that's where I've come with this. That's where I've come with it. I am suggesting that the destruction of Revelation 12.5, the de destruction that it speaks of, is speak that it's speaking of is not physical but spiritual, having more to do with the absence of sound biblical doctrine, resulting in increased near complete apostasy. And I will go a step further, and I'll suggest that the teaching of sound biblical doctrine is actually holding back the rapture of the church. A final gathering of sheep into the fold, and if it were not for the preaching of the gospel, we would have been raptured by now. A fact that is only rightly understood by those who know the true gospel. I'm not talking about the man-centered gospel, or a watered-down gospel, a gospel that proclaims what man must do rather than what Christ did. And I believe that the gospel and the rapture are intrinsically related to one another spiritually. You can't separate the two, folks. Just a casual reading of Revelation 12 will prove it to be telling a story of what has been, what now is, and what shall be, and not in chronological order. It is this story, I call it a history lesson, that God wants us to know or be reminded of as his return draws near. The story begins with, with Israel bringing forth the Messiah, actually, begins a little before that it begins with the creation of Israel where that Israel brings forth the Messiah and it ends with the kingdom that's quite a story folks covers a lot of time and what we've done is we have taken the whole entire revel we've made we've made the, the phrase revelation 12 synonymous with one single event that is only mentioned in that chapter in an incidental way i'm persuaded that the actual alignment occurred on 922 923 of 2017 in order to confirm things which are to come, things to come, future events about to unfold in real time, a final wake-up call to God's people living in the, the final last days of a final generation. That's not just the final generation, folks, the final last days of a final generation, meaning Christ is at the door. Those who are reading uh, the Re Revelation 12, uh, chapter 12 in Revelation in, in the year 1950 would not have perceived it in the same way that we have. And Revelation, as I said, is not chronological. Contained within John's vision is seen a real-time past, present, and future picture of Israel, Christ, his body, the body of Christ, which includes the rapture and Satan and Christ and his body, and I can't emphasize this enough, Christ and his body share an inseparable union. The head and the body are not separate entities. 
the Revel chapter 12 of Revelation can be speaking, and I believe it is speaking, of are referencing both the physical birth of Christ as well as the spiritual birth of the church and rapture of the church. We are his body, spiritually. Another reason why I now lean toward the view of Satan's attempt to devour the church as something spiritual, not physical, Harpazo implies a sudden removal from danger, but her spiritual destruction could be seen as that danger. The light of the true gospel and the preaching of it, folks, is growing dim. It only makes sense that the diminishing light of the gospel would precede the darkness of the tribulation period. And I believe that to really understand the Revelation 12 sign, we must first understand, and I believe God would expect us to understand, the true nature of the gospel itself, which I believe helps explain why modern Christianity in general has scoffed and ridiculed the Revelation 12 sign, because the gospel which it proclaims is another gospel. I believe that the physical aspect of the Revelation 12 uh, rapture, which is an event, has distracted us from the spiritual perspective of the dragon's desire to devour the body of Christ through a perversion of the gospel, okay? That he has tried to destroy the gospel of Christ since the church began at Pentecost. You can't separate the body from the gospel, the male child from the gospel. You can't do that. That he has tried to destroy the gospel of Christ since the church began at Pentecost, since day one. And if we are not raptured soon, he will have done just that. And that the rapture will deliver us from that. Because we can't separate the church, the body of Christ, the male child, from the gospel. John saw Christianity as born of Judaism through labor. And, and he saw Satan bent on destroying the church since its beginning. He saw it caught up to God's throne in preservation, preventing that devouring. He saw war break out in heaven as a result of that harpazo. And he saw Satan cast down to pursue the woman who gave birth to the male child. John was shown past, present, future. September 23rd, 2017 was not meant to be any event. It was meant, I believe, to awaken the church to the soon fulfillment of that which John was shown. All of it, not just the rapture, all of it. We won't see any sky dragon. That's the dragon's own dis distraction from the truth surrounding the vision. Satan has stood before the woman ready to destroy devour the male child since the birth of Christ and his body. Both. Both. Okay? What John was not shown was Satan trying to destroy Christ since the fall by corrupting the seed, you know, enter the great deluge. We cannot separate the head from the body. Christ is not one thing and his body another. And we should know that. I base this conclusion of mine on several factors. My belief that things spiritual supersede the physical. My being led to preach the gospel when our, expe uh, our expectations were not met in September of 2017. Uh, my confidence regarding the true nature of the gospel that I am proclaiming and my conviction that there is no such thing as coincidence. Modern Christianity nearing a full state of apostasy.
So there's a history lesson in the Revelation 12 signs, plural. All right. Verse 1. We see God choosing the nation Israel to bring light unto the nations, the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 2, we see the intense labor of God's chosen nation Israel to bring forth her beloved Messiah. In verse 3, we see the fall of Satan and his becoming the God of this world. In verse 4, we see the expulsion of Satan from heaven and a third of the angels from heaven. And we see Herod's efforts to destroy the Christ child. In verses five and six, we see the beginning of the church at Pentecost. A parenthesis there after, after that with the church ruling with Christ throughout the millennium. And then the rapture, an incidental mention of the rapture and God protecting Israel the first half of the tribulation, which could be the Psalm 83 war. That covers a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of time period there, verses 5 and 6. Verses 7 and 9, war in heaven because the church is now in heaven, and Satan is defeated and forever expelled from heaven. Verse 10, we see salvation, millennium, with Christ as king. Verse 11, victory over Satan by the blood of Christ through the testimony and the martyrdom of tribulation saints. And then in verse 12, Revelation 12, 12, the rejoicing of the saints and the angels in heaven over Satan's defeat and Satan's fury during the great tribulation period, the latter half. Verse 13, Satan's intent to utterly destroy Israel. Verse 14, Israel flees from Satan with great speed, two wings of an eagle, great speed into God's place of protection. Verse 15, a massive invasion intent on Israel's destruction. Verse 16, God through the nations assist Israel in defeating Satan and his Antichrist. And then in verse 17, Satan then directs his wrath against the nations. And interestingly, we go into chapter 13 where John goes back to describing events during the tribulation period. Like I said, Revelation is not chronological. That's where many get messed up on the, the, the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, the bowl judgments, and so on and so forth. So that's my take on this, folks, as we come up on the two-year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign, where that I decided the, the best thing that I could do would be to dedicate this ministry to proclaiming the gospel itself. Not a separate issue from the Revelation 12 sign, but intrinsically a significant part of it. We can't separate the gospel of grace from the male child that will be caught up to God's throne to be rewarded for its proclamation of it. I love you all. I truly do. Thanks for watching.